Hi, today we're going to be learning about solving equations. Now we've already learned about solving equations using inspection, but now we're going to be doing more complicated equations, which means that we need to have methods that we can use to solve the equations when we have more complex things we have to deal with. So we're going to start off by looking at equations and how they need to remain balanced. Okay, so an equation is kind of like a set of scales where we've got balls on our set of scales and they can hold things. And if we add something to one of those balls, it's going to make that equation or that set of scales unbalanced. If I want to balance it again, I need to do the exact same thing to the other ball and that will make them level again, which means that they are balanced again. Now an equation is very similar to this concept of the set of scales. If I do one, if I do something, anything to one side of the equation, in other words, like the ball over here, the left hand side, then I have to do the exact same thing on the other side of the equation. Okay, so this is a concept that we're going to be using while we are solving equations now. We are also going to be using the concept of inverse operations. Now an inverse operation is in maths, operations that cancel each other out. So inverse operations in maths, we have got addition and subtraction. Because if I add and subtract the exact same number, it will cancel each other out. If I say plus two, minus two, they cancel out and give me zero. So addition and subtraction are inverse operations. Another pair of inverse operations would be multiplication and division. Okay, so those are our inverse operations there as well. We've got if you were to multiply by 2 and then divide by 2, it would also cancel each other out. Multiplying by 2, dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1, which means that whatever you've got is going to remain the same. So we've got addition and subtraction and multiplication and division. Those are our pairs of inverse operations. So we're going to be using that while we are solving equations. Let's have a look at our first example where we are going to solve the equation x plus 5 equal to 9. So now when we are solving an equation, you've already done this by inspection before, where you had to say, well, what plus 5 would give you 9? Now we know that if x is 4, then 4 plus 5 will give you 9. So that means that that would be true. Okay, so we've already learned how to do that by inspection, but we now need to have a method that we can use for more complicated equations. But we're starting off with easy ones while we're learning. Okay, so first of all, whenever you are solving an equation, your goal is to know what must x be equal to. So we want to reach a point where we have x equal to a number, or whatever the variable happens to be. You could have an equation that has a, or b, or c, or y, or z, or whatever. Okay, so whatever the variable is, we want to get that equal to a number. So that is our goal. Now, in this case, we know that x should be 4 because we can see that 4 plus 5 must give us 9. So x should be equal to 4 in this example. So we know that this is what we are trying to get to. Okay. Now, when we are solving an equation, because we want to get x equal to a number, that means we want to have nothing else on the side where x is. I don't want to have x plus something equal to a number. I want to have just x equal to a number. So I need to get the x on its own, which means that I need to get rid of anything that is on that side that the x is on. Okay, so the first step when we are solving an equation is to first make sure that all the x terms are on the side, are on the left hand side. Okay, now we normally work with x on the left hand side or the variable on the left hand side. You can move the variables to the right hand side and solve the equation that way, but the general way of doing it is moving them to the left hand side. So we're going to be moving our, our x terms to the left hand side. So in this case, it's already on the left hand side, so I don't have to do anything there. But what I do need to do is I need to get rid of anything that is not an x term, anything that is a constant. So I want to get rid of this plus 5, and this is where our inverse operations is going to come in. So I've got plus 5. If I want to get rid of that plus 5, I need to do the inverse of that. If it's addition, I need to do the inverse, which is subtraction. So I'm going to subtract 5 to get rid of the 5 because I don't want the 5 to be there. I want to get x on its own. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say x plus 5 minus 5. Now that plus 5 minus 5 is going to cancel out, giving me 0. Okay, but remember what we said. 
that if I do something on one side of the equation and I don't do it on the other side of the equation, it's going to be unbalanced. So whatever I do on one side, I have to do the same thing on the other side in order for it to be balanced. So in this case, I have subtracted 5 on the left hand side. This is something that I have added to the equation that wasn't there before. Okay, so I have subtracted on the left hand side. I have to do the exact same thing on the right hand side. So on the right hand side, I've already got 9. Now I have to subtract 5 over here. So this is what I have put into this equation that wasn't there before. And I have to do the exact same thing on both sides of the equation for that equation to remain balanced. Once I've done that, I can now simplify both sides. The plus 5 and the minus 5 are going to cancel out. That was the whole reason I did this in the first place, because I wanted to cancel out that plus 5. I wanted to get rid of it. Okay, so that is going to give me just x. x plus 5 minus 5 gives me just x. And on the right hand side, 9 minus 5 is equal to 4. And so now I end up with what I knew I was supposed to get in the first place. I knew I was supposed to get 4 because I, I knew that 4 plus 5 gives me 9, right? Okay, so if I get to the point over here where I have x equals 4, therefore x equals 4, I can now check it and I can say, if I put 4 in for x and I add 5, does it give me that? Yes, it does. So now I know that that is correct. So what I did over here, I had my equation. I cancelled out anything that wasn't supposed to be on the side where the x was by using inverse operations, and then I simplified. So let's have a look at another example. This one used to had addition and subtraction that we were working with. What happens if we have an example like this, where we've got 2x equals 10. So in this case, there's no additional subtraction. 2x, remember, means 2 multiplied by x, or 2 times x. Okay, so multiplication and division are inverse operations. So if I want to cancel out the 2, where it's 2 times x, I need to do the opposite of multiplication, and I need to divide. So I need to say 2 times x divided by 2, and that will cancel out my 2. Because 2 divided by 2 is 1. That will leave me with 1x, or just x. Okay, so remember, if I do something to one side of the equation, I have to do the same thing to the other side of the equation as well, so to keep it balanced. So if I've multiplied by 2 on one side, I have to multiply by 2 on the other side. If I divide by 2 on one side, I have to divide by 2 on the other side as well. So that's what I'm going to do over here. So if I have 2x divided by 2 equals 10, then I must do the same thing, divide by 2. And that is what I've got over there. So now, I'm going to simplify that. So 2x divided by 2, the 2's cancel, which is the whole reason I did this in the first place. Okay, and that gives me just x on my left-hand side, or 1x, which is just x. And on my right-hand side, I have 10 divided by 2, which is 5. And now if we check it, I can see 2 multiplied by x, which is 5, 2 times 5 is 10, and my right-hand side is 10, so that means that that is true. So this value of x satisfies the equation. It makes it true. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some that you're going to work on for yourself. Now in these examples, they are simple examples that you should be able to work out by inspection. However, remember the whole reason we're doing this now is we are learning how to use inverse operations and keep equations balanced. So that's what I want you to practice now. I want you to practice solving these equations using the concept of inverse operations and keeping your equation balanced by doing the same thing on both sides. Okay, so now I'm going to give you two minutes to complete, to complete these examples.
Okay, so let's take a look at those examples and see how you did. The first example we had x minus 7 equals 2. So the first thing I need to do is I need to look at, see where x is. x is on its own over here, or it's not on its own, it's, we need to get it on its own. x is on the left hand side of the equation. I've got x minus 7, so I need to get the x on its own. And in order to do that, I need to use the inverse operation of minus, which is plus. So I need to cancel out that minus 7 by adding 7. So I've got x minus 7 plus 7. So this is going to cancel out the 7 so I can get rid of it. But remember, our equation needs to remain balanced. So whatever I do on the one side, I have to do the same thing on the other side. So I've got 2 on the other side. I need to do the same thing as what I did over here. So I need to plus 7 on this side as well. Now I can go and I can cancel these out. So I've got minus 7 plus 7. They cancel. That gives me x. So therefore, x is equal to 2 plus 7, which is 9. Now let's check it. If, I, if x is 9, then I have 9 minus 7, which gives me 2, which is equal to the 2 over there. So now I know that I've got that right. Okay, so let's have a look at the next one. Question B, we had 8 plus x equals 3. Okay, so now in this case, again, it's addition. Now it doesn't matter that the 8 is before the x or after the x, it's still, I'm adding it to the x, okay? So I want to cancel out that 8. So I'm going to have 8 plus x, the opposite or the inverse of addition is subtraction. So I'm going to subtract 8 to cancel out that 8. And then because it's an equation, I have to do the same thing on both sides. So that's 3 minus 8 on the other side. Okay, so then the 8s are going to cancel out over here. And that leaves me with just x, which was the reason we were doing that. I wanted to get x on its own equal to 3 minus 8 is negative 5. So now let's check. If x is negative 5, then that means I have 8 plus negative 5, which is the same as 8 minus 5, which gives me 3, which is the same as what I've got over here. So that is correct. Okay, then question C, I've got 3x equals 12. So over here, remember, 3x means 3 multiplied by x. So I need to do the inverse of multiplication, which is division. So I need to have 3x divided by the 3 to cancel out that 3 equal to 12, also divided by 3, because I have to keep my equation balanced. So the 3 cancels with the 3, and that gives me just x equals 12 divided by 3, which is 4. So therefore, x is equal to 4. Now we can check it. If x is 4, that means I have 3 times 4, which is 12. And on the right-hand side, I have 12 as well. So that means that that is correct. And then the last question, we have x over 4. Remember, a fraction means division. So this is the same as x divided by 4. So if I want to cancel out that divided by 4, I need to multiply by 4 because multiplication and division are inverse operations. So x over 4 times 4 equals 7. And now because I multiplied by 4 on this side, I have to do the same thing on that side. So these 4s are now going to cancel, which is the reason I did that in the first place. Okay, and that gives me x equal to 7 times 4, which is 28. So now let's check. If x is 28, that means I have 28 divided by 4, which is 7. And on the right-hand side, I have 7. So that is correct. Okay, so that is just a basic idea of how we use inverse operations and the balancing to keep to solve our equations. Now let's go on to some that are a little bit more complicated, that have a bit more involved that we have to do. Okay, so this example over here, I've got 3 minus 2x equal to 9 plus x. Okay, so now remember, I need to make sure that I have got x on one side of the equation and all the constants on the other side of the equation. So now in this case, I've got x on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, and I've got numbers on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. So what I need to do now is I need to get rid of any x's that are on the side I don't want them to be on. I need to get rid of any numbers that are on the side that I don't want them to be on. So I'm going to start off by getting rid of my x on this side, and then remember, anytime we do something to the one side, we have to do to the same thing to the other. So I'm going to have over here, 3 minus 2x equal to 9 
plus x, but I want to cancel out that plus x. I don't want that to be there because I don't want x's to be on my right hand side. I only want x's on my left hand side. So I'm going to have it over here minus x because the opposite or the inverse of addition is subtraction. So that will cancel that out. But remember, I have to keep it balanced. So I have to do the same thing on the side as well. So minus x on that side too. Okay. Then I also want to get rid of any numbers on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this three and I'm going to take it away from here, which means I'm also going to have to do something on that side with it. But first, let's just simplify this so we have less to worry about. So I've got three minus two x minus x is minus three x equals. And over here, nine and then plus x minus x, those cancel. That was the whole reason I did that in the first place, remember. Okay. Now I want to get rid of this 3. I don't want the 3 to be there because I want to have only x's on this side. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 3 because it's positive 3. Now don't get confused. This is minus 3x. It's the 3x that is being subtracted. It's not the 3 that's being subtracted. The 3 is positive. And if I want to get rid of that 3, I have to subtract 3 to get rid of the 3. So I've got 3 minus 3x and then I have to subtract 3 to cancel out that 3 over there. And then I do the same thing on the other side to keep it balanced. Okay, so now I'm going to simplify that. The 3 and the minus 3 are going to simplify and cancel. And that leaves me with negative 3x on the side of the equation. Equal to 9 minus 3, which is 6. Okay, so the very first thing you do when you get an equation like this is you need to first get all of the x terms on one side of the equation and constant terms on the other side of the equation. Once we've done that, then we can worry about coefficients. So up until this point, I wasn't worrying about the fact that I had a number in front of the x. I'm going to worry about that afterwards. I'm first going to deal with getting rid of terms that do not have x in them on the left and terms that do have x in them on the right. Okay, so that is my first step is to get the right terms in the right places. Okay, once I've got to this point, I can now use the multiplication and division as inverse operations to get the x on its own. So now I've got negative 3 multiplied by x. Now I don't want to have negative 3x, I want to have just x, which means I have to get rid of this whole negative 3 factor. Now if it's negative 3 times x, the inverse of multiplication is division, so I need to divide by not just 3, I need to divide by negative 3. So this is going to be negative 3x divided by negative 3. And I do need to do the same thing on the other side. 6 divided by negative 3. I can't just divide by 3 because then I'm still going to have negative x. And I don't want to want, I don't want to know what negative x is. I want to know what x is. So I need to get rid of the negative as well, which means I need to divide by negative 3, which will make that whole thing cancel like that. And that will leave me with x equal to, and now we know that we have a positive divided by negative gives us a negative answer, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. So that means that if x is negative 2, then this equation should be true. So now we can check it if we want to. We can see, okay, so if I have on my left hand side, I have 3 minus 2 times x, which is negative 2. That gives me 3 minus, uh, negative 2 times negative 2 is plus four, which gives me seven. So on my left hand side, I have seven. And let's check on my right hand side. I've got nine plus x. So that's nine plus negative two, which is nine minus two, which gives me seven. So the left hand side and the right hand side give me the same answers if x is equal to negative two. Okay. So now you're going to do a few for yourself using the same concept. Remember, when you're doing this, the steps that we're going to follow, the first thing you're going to do is move or get rid of any x's on the right-hand side and any constants on the left-hand side. Now, you can do it in the same step if you want to. Okay, You don't have to do the x's first and simplify and then do the, the constants and simplify. You can do it in one step, but while you're getting used to it, I recommend that you do do it separately just so you don't get confused with what you're doing. Once you've got it, so you only have x's on the left hand side and you only have constants on the right hand side, then you can check and see if there's a coefficient that you need to get rid of and use the inverse with multiplication and division to solve for x. Okay, so these examples you're going to do over here, they're a little bit more complicated, they're a little bit more difficult to solve 
just by inspection okay and so if you want to check yourself I do recommend that you check like this right I'm going to give you three minutes to work on these examples Okay, so let's see how those examples went. The first one, we had 7 minus 5x equal to 22. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that we only have x terms on the left and we only have constant terms on the right, which means I need to get rid, in this case, of my constant term that is on the left. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, if I've got positive 7 over here, I'm going to cancel that out by subtracting 7. So I've got 7 minus 5x and then I'm going to subtract 7. Now, because it's an equation, I have to do the same thing on both sides. So 22 also minus 7. And then these are going to cancel out, leaving me with a negative 5x on my left-hand side, equal to 22 minus 7. So equal to, let's simplify that, 15. Okay, that was what we were supposed to do there. Now, we need to get x on its own. To do that, I need to get rid of this negative 5. I don't want to know what negative 5x is. I want to know what x is. So I need to get rid of that negative 5. And to do that, I have negative 5 multiplied by x. The inverse of multiplication is division. So I need to divide by negative 5. So I have negative 5x divided by negative 5 equal to 15 divided by negative 5. When I simplify that, these are going to cancel out giving me just x and 15 divided by negative 5 is negative 3 so therefore x is equal to negative 3 okay now you can check it and you should find that when you simplify it the left hand side and the right hand side are both equal to 22 okay so now let's have a look at question b 
we've got x over 3 plus 6 equal to 10. So first, again, just like in this one, I need to get the term that has the x in it on its own on the left-hand side, and I need to get all the constant terms, only constant terms, on the right-hand side. So to, to do that, I've got plus 6. I need to cancel that out by using the inverse operation, minus 6. So I've got x over 3 plus 6 minus 6 equal to 10. And because I subtracted 6 on the left-hand side, I have to do the same thing over here, minus 6. Okay, so now we're going to simplify that. The, six, the plus 6 and minus 6 cancel each other out. And that gives me x over 3 equal to 10 minus 6, which is 4. Okay, now I need to get the x on its own. So to do that, I've got x divided by 3. Remember, fraction means division. So x divided by 3, I need to do the inverse of division, which is multiplication. So x over 3 times 3. That will cancel out the 3s. And then I have to do the same thing on the other side. So 4 times 3. And then that is going to cancel out, like I said over here, leaving me with just x. So therefore, x is equal to 4 times 3, which is 12. So now you should be able to check if x is 12, then 12 divided by 3 is 4 plus 6 is equal to 10, which is the same as what we have on the right-hand side. Okay, question C, we've got x minus, negative x minus 2 equal to negative 5 minus 3x. So the first thing we need to do here is I'm going to make sure that I get rid of any x's that are not on the left-hand side. Okay, so I've got over here a negative 3x, which is on the right-hand side, so I want to get rid of that. So to cancel out that negative 3x, I'm going to add 3x, okay, because it's got subtraction here, and the inverse is addition. So I've got negative, three, negative x minus 2 on this side equal to negative 5 minus 3x, and I'm going to add 3x on that side. But because I did that on the one side, I have to do it on the other as well. So I've got plus 3x there as well. Okay, so now that is going to simplify. Those will cancel. And that will give me negative x plus 3x is 2x minus 2 equal to negative 5. Now I'm going to go and get rid of any constants that are on the left hand side. So I want to get rid of this minus 2. And to do that, I'm going to subtract or I'm going to add 2. So I'm going to say 2x minus 2 plus 2 equal to negative 5 plus 2. I have to do the same thing on both sides again. So these are going to cancel out, leaving me with just 2x equal to negative 5 plus 2, which is negative 3. And now I'm going to simplify this, or I'm going to solve for x by getting rid of the 2. It's 2 multiplied by x, so I need to divide by 2. So I've got 2x divided by 2 equals negative 3 divided by 2. Now I'm going to write that as negative 3 divided by 2. I'm going to write that in a better way. So that is going to be as a fraction. So I've got those cancelling like that. This gives me x equal to negative 3 divided by 2 is 3 over 2. We want to give our answer as a fraction like that. Okay, it doesn't need to be written as a mixed number. We can leave it as an improper fraction, but if it is not simplified, then I need to simplify it as far as I can. Okay, so in that example, I've got x is equal to negative 3 over 2. And then the last example, question D, we had 2 minus 8x equal to 4 minus 7x. So again, just like in the previous one, I want to move or I want to get rid of any x's that are on the right-hand side and I want to get rid of any constants that are on the left-hand side. Now, remember I said you can do those in the same step. So that's what I'm going to do this time. I'm going to do that in the same step. So first, over here, I've got 2 minus 8x. I want to get rid of that 2. So I'm going to have 2 minus 8x, and I'm going to subtract 2 to get rid of the minus, to get rid of the 2. And then on this side, I'm going to have to do the same thing. 4 minus 7x, I have to subtract 2 as well. Okay, at the same time, I'm going to get rid of the 7x here, the minus 7x, by adding 7x. But because I'm doing it on the one side, I have to do the same thing on the other side. So I've got plus 7x. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to go and cancel out the things that cancel out. So that's my 2 and negative 2, those cancel. And my negative 7x and my positive 7x also cancel. Leaving me on the left-hand side with negative 8x, plus 7x, which is just negative x, 
equal to, on my right hand side, I have 4 minus 2, which is 2. Now I need to be careful over here. I don't want to know what negative x is. I want to know what x is. So what is my coefficient that I'm going to divide here by? Remember, if you can't see a number, it is 1. So if I want to get rid of this negative, I need to divide by negative 1. Because at the moment, it is negative 1 multiplied by x. It's negative 1x. So I need to divide by negative 1. So I've got negative x divided by negative 1. And then I do the same thing on the other side as well. Divide by negative 1. And that is going to change this to positive. So I'm going to have that cancelling with that, giving me positive x equal to, and then on this side, 2 divided by negative 1 is negative 2. And that's what you should get for that example over there. And again, you can check it by subbing in negative 2 for x over there and negative 2 for x over there, and you should find that they both come out to the same answer on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Okay, so now this is a bit long and complicated. Now there is a shorter method that we can use to simplify these equations. So let's have a look at an a very simple example where we do it the same way we've been doing it up until now and then I show you the short method. Okay, so the long method, first of all the example we're going to be doing is x plus 2 equal to 5. Now over here I'm doing the long method. Okay, when we are simplifying this, or when we're solving this rather, we want to get rid of that 2, just like we've been doing up until this point. So I'm going to say x plus 2, I'm going to subtract 2 equals 5, and then I'm going to subtract 2 again. Okay, and then that gives me, these cancel over here, and that gives me x equal to 5 minus 2, which is 3. Okay, so now there is a quicker way of doing this, and this is using the short method. And that is, the, we're going to be doing exactly the same thing. We've got x plus 2 equal to 5, but I'm going to say I know that when I subtract 2 over here, it's going to cancel out, so I don't need to write it. I don't need to write that at all. I can just go straight ahead and I can say x. I'm going to cancel this out by subtracting 2, but then I have to do that on this side as well, subtract 2. So all I'm doing is it's exactly the same thing that I had over here, but I'm not writing that because I know that the, po the positive 2 and the negative 2 cancel each other out. So what all I'm going to end up doing is writing the minus 2 on this side because... I would have written it here, but I didn't need to because it cancelled with that plus 2 over there. Okay, so I just write the minus 2 on this side over here. And then I can simplify. I can say, therefore, x equals 3. Now, what this actually looks like is that the 2 is moving across the equal sign. It looks like it jumped from there to there, and it changed signs. It looks like it went from a plus 2 to a minus 2. And so we often talk about moving it across the equal sign and changing signs, but that's not actually what's happening. What's actually happening is that we are cancelling it out on the side, and then we're doing the same thing on that side, and that's how we end up with this. But it does look like it is moving across and changing sign. Okay, so that's language that we often use. We say we move it across the equal sign, or we move the x's to one side and the numbers to the other side. That's not technically what's happening. What's technically happening is we're cancelling them out on the one side, and as we're cancelling them out on the other on that side, we have to balance it, so we have to do the same thing on both sides. Okay? But we can use the short method where we just think of it as moving it across and changing the sign. And then it just means that it's a lot quicker to write down and to actually do. So now we're going to use the short method over here in an example that we're going to be doing over here. Okay, so in this example, I've got negative 5 plus 7x minus 9 equals negative 5x plus 7x minus 3. Okay, so first of all, now I know I want my x's to be on the left-hand side of my equation. I want my numbers to be on the right-hand side of the equation, which means that I need to get rid of any non-x terms or any constant terms on this side. I need to get rid of any x terms on this side. And to do that, 
I am going to cancel them out by using the inverse operations, but I'm only going to write it on the other side of the equation. I'm just going to cancel it on that side. Okay, so over here, I want to get rid of my minus 5. So to get rid of negative 5, I'm going to add 5 on that side of the equation and cancel it out over here. Okay, all I'm going to end up writing is x's on this side. So I'm going to not write this. I'm only going to write my 7x that I've got over there. So 7x, it's positive, so I don't need to write the plus. Then I'm going to look on this side and I'm going to see what x terms do I have here that I need to get rid of that I'm going to end up with on this side of here. So on this side, I've got negative 5x. I'm going to add 5x to cancel that out, which means that I'm going to add 5x over here. Okay, then I've got 7x over here, positive 7x. To cancel that out, I need to subtract 7x. So I'm going to subtract 7x on this side over here. Okay, then on this side, I'm only going to be writing my constant terms. I've already cancelled that out. I've already cancelled that out. I have them over there. Okay, and I don't need to write it over here because I know that they cancel. That was the whole reason I did that in the first place was to make them cancel. Okay, so then I have negative 3 over here. Then I look on this side and I see what constants do I have. I have negative 5. I'm going to cancel the negative 5 out with a positive 5, which I'm going to write plus 5 over there. Then I've got over here negative 9, and I'm going to cancel that out with a plus 9, which I will write plus 9 over here. And now I can go and I can simplify, and I can say 7x minus 7x, well those cancel because they are the same as each other, just opposite. And I've got 5x over here, so that gives me 5x on the left hand side. And on the right hand side I've got negative 3 plus 5 plus 9, that gives me 11. Once I've got that, I now can go and get rid of the 5 over here by just doing the same thing we were doing before, dividing by 5. So I've got 5x divided by 5, but again, I don't need to write divided by 5. Just like over here, I didn't need to write that over there. I can go straight ahead and I can say, therefore, x, I'm going to divide by 5, it will cancel. And then I must divide by 5 on the side. So 11 divided by 5 is 11 over 5. If I could simplify that, I would then need to simplify it as well. But in this case, I can't simplify it, so I'm done with this equation. Please take note over here. I could, if you see, if you look over here, I've got 7x minus 7x, those cancel. I could have canceled those right in the beginning. As soon as you see the exact same thing on both sides of the equation, and it has the same sign. So it's positive 7x and positive 7x. I could have cancelled those out there already if I had wanted to. And then I would only have had to worry about that 5x that I would be um, sub adding here to cancel and then adding on the, right, the left hand side as well. So you can cancel things out right in the beginning if you see that they are exactly the same on both sides of the equation. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some that you're going to work on for yourself. And in this case, I want you to try and use the short method to simplify or solve these equations. So I'm going to give you three minutes to work on these examples.
Okay, so let's go through each of those examples. So question A, we had negative 2x plus 3x equals 2x plus 3x plus 4. Now remember what I said over here, because I had 7 plus 7x and plus 7x, I could have cancelled those out right in the beginning. I'm going to do that with this example over here. I've got plus 3x and plus 3x, which I can cancel out straight away. They are identical. The actual terms, the coefficient and the variables are the, are the same, and they have the same signs. So I can cancel those out, and then I don't have to worry about them at all. I can't cancel out these ones, because here I've got a negative, and here I've got a positive. They are not identical to each other. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I want to get rid of anything that isn't an x on the left-hand side, and anything that isn't a constant on the right hand side. So over here I've got negative, that means I'm only going to be writing down the x terms on the left hand side. So I've got negative 2x on the left over here. Then I'm going to come, I have no other x terms to write down. I've cancelled that. I'm going to go to the right hand side here. I've got positive 2x. Now I'm going to have to get rid of that which means I need to subtract 2x. So I'm going to subtract 2x on the left hand side as well because it'll cancel out over there but I have to still show it over here. Then I'm going to go to my constants. Now there are no constants to worry about here and over here I just have this 4 so I'm not going to have to do anything else with that. It just stays as it is. And now I'm going to go and simplify. I've got negative 2x minus 2x gives me negative 4x equal to 4. Now I'm going to divide by negative 4. Remember it's negative 4 multiplied by x. I have to divide by everything that x is being multiplied by which is the negative 4. So I'm, I'm going to end up with x equal to 4 divided by negative 4 is negative 1. So I don't have to show the division, I can just do it. Okay, so I've got 4 divided by negative 4 gives me negative 1. Okay, so that's what you should have got for question A. Question B, I've got 6x plus 3 minus 7 equals negative 9 minus 5x plus 7. So again, I'm going to get all my x terms on the left hand side, all my constant terms on the right hand side, which means that when I do the next step, I'm only going to write the x terms. I'm not going to write the constant terms while I'm doing the left hand side. So I'm going to write 6x and then I've got only constants, so I'm going to move over here and I'm going to see what x terms do I have here that I need to get rid of. I've got a minus 5x. I need to get rid of it, so I'm going to add 5x. So I'm going to add 5x on this side over there, equals. And remember, when I add 5x on that side, it cancels. Then on the right hand side, I've got negative 9 as a constant. I'm not worrying about that. I've already dealt with it. And then plus 7. And then I'm going to come over here and I need to look at the constant terms that I need to get rid of. So I've got positive 3. I need to cancel that out by subtracting 3. So I'm going to subtract 3 on this side as well. And over here, I've got negative 7. I need to cancel that out. I need to add 7. So I'm going to add 7 on this side as well. Okay, so now I'm going to simplify. So I've got 6x plus 5x is 11x. Over here, I've got negative 9 minus 3 is negative 12, and then plus 7 plus 7 is plus 14, so negative 12 plus 14 is 2. So that gives me 11x equal to 2, and now I need to go and simplify or solve for x with just 1x. I don't want to know what 11x is, so I'm going to divide by 11. So therefore, x is equal to 2 divided by 11. Now, I can't simplify that fraction, so I'm done. I leave it as it is. Okay, then question C, 5x plus 3 plus 1 minus 7x equals 6x minus 4x plus 4. First, I'm going to deal with my x terms on the left. I'm going to not worry about the constants because I'll be dealing with them when I get to my right hand side. So I've got 5x minus 7x on my left and then on my right hand side I've got a 6x that I need to get rid of so I need to minus 6x on both sides and then I'm going to get rid of my, my minus 4x so I'm going to add 4x on both sides okay then on my right hand side I've got a 4 which is a constant I've already dealt with those they have cancelled out now then I'm going to take the plus 3 I need to get rid of it so I'm going to subtract 3, and I'm going to take the plus 1 and get rid of it, so I'm going to subtract 1. Okay, so now I've got 5x minus 7x minus 6x plus 4x. That all gives you negative 4x. And then over here, I've got 4 minus 3 minus 1 is 0. Now, if you end up with something x equal to 0, 
that's fine because I can divide by negative 4 and 0 divided by anything stays 0. So x is equal to 0 because remember negative 4 times 0 will give us 0. So x is equal to 0. So in question C you should have got 0 as your value for x. Okay, then question D we've got 5 plus 5x minus 1 equal to 9x minus 9 minus 3x minus 8. Okay, so first I'm going to deal with my x terms on the left hand side of here. So I've got 5x. I'm not worrying about those. I'll deal with those when I get to the right hand side. Then I've got a 9x on the right that I need to get rid of. So I'm going to subtract 9x and I must do that on the left hand side as well. Over here I've got negative 3x which I'm going to cancel out by adding 3x. So I add 3x on the left hand side as well. Okay, then I go to my right hand side. I've dealt with all of my x's, so now I can go and deal with my constants on my right hand side. So I've got minus 9, minus 8, and then on my left hand side I've got a positive 5, which I need to cancel out by subtracting 5 on both sides, and then I've got a negative 1, which I need to cancel out by adding 1 on both sides. Okay, so now I've got 5x minus 9x plus 3x, that gives us negative x equal to negative 9 minus 8 minus 5 plus 1 gives me negative 21. Okay, so once you've got that, now we need to get rid of this negative over here. Okay, remember, I don't want to know what negative x is, I want to know what x is. So I'm going to get rid of the negative 1 by dividing by negative 1. But I don't need to show it. That's what I'm doing, but I don't need to show it. So if I have negative x equal to something, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. That gives me positive 21. So x is equal to positive 21. Okay, so that's how we use the short method. Now there are a couple of other things I need to show you. The first is called identities. This is a special kind of equation that we can get. So here's an example of an equation that is actually an identity and I'm going to explain what that means soon but first let's have a look at what happens when we solve this equation so I've got over here 3x plus 2 minus x equal to 4x minus 1 minus 2x plus 3 okay so just like we've been doing up until this point let's use our short method and let's solve this equation so I'm going to do I have my x terms on the left so I'm going to have 3x I'm not worrying about that for now. I'm going to go on to the minus x. Then on the right hand side, I've got 4x I need to get rid of, so I'm going to minus 4x. And I've got negative 2x I need to cancel out by adding 2x to both sides. Equals. Okay. On the right hand side, I have got negative 1, I've got positive 3, and let's just check for any constants on this side that I need to get rid of. So I've got positive 2, which I need to get rid of, so I'm going to cancel it out by subtracting 2 on both sides. Okay, so now let's simplify that. So I've got 3x minus x minus 4x plus 2x. Okay, so 3x plus 2x is 5x. Minus x minus 4x is negative 5x. So that actually all cancels out, giving me 0. Equals negative 1 plus 3 minus 2 also cancels out, giving us 0. So what I end up with is 0 equal to 0. Okay, now what this over here is telling me that it doesn't matter what x is, x could be anything. And I would still end up with 0 equal to 0, which means it would still be true. This is what we call an identity. They are identical to each other. This is identical to that. If I were to simplify this, if I had 3x plus 2 minus x equal to 4x minus 1 minus 2x plus 3, and if I just simplified both sides, 3x minus x is 2x plus 2 equals 4x minus 2x is also 2x, minus 1 plus 3 is plus 2. 2x plus 2, they are identical. It doesn't matter what x is. x could be 1, and it would be true. x could be 5, and it would be true. x could be 100, and it would be true. x could be negative 10, and it would be true. It doesn't matter what x is. x can be anything, which means that our answer for this one is therefore x is an element of real numbers. It can be any real number and it will be true. Okay, so this is what we call an identity where the two sides of the equation are identical and it doesn't matter what value of x you have, it will always be true. Okay, this could also be written like this. 3x plus 2 minus x is identical to 
4x minus 1 minus 2x plus 3. So this triple line like that means identical. Okay. Now we're going to go and have a look at a different one where there is no solution. So an identity has an infinite number of solutions because any value of x will work. Now let's have a look at what happens when we have no solution. Okay, so in this, the next example we're going to be doing, we have got over here 3x plus 3 minus x equals 4x minus 1 minus 2x plus 3. Now you might notice that this is very similar to the previous example that we had. Okay, in the previous example, it was basically exactly the same, except that I had a plus 2 and here I have a plus 3. Otherwise, it's exactly the same. Okay, so let's see what happens when we simplify this or when we solve it. So I'm going to take all my x's to the one side. That gives me 3x minus x and I'm going to have minus 4x and I'm going to have plus 2x equals. Over here, I've got minus 1, plus 3, and then minus 3. Okay, so now over here, this is exactly the same as what I had before. 3x minus x minus 4x plus 2x all cancels, giving me 0. Equals. But now on this side, negative 1 plus 3 minus 3 is equal to negative 1. Now this is different to the previous example. If you look at the previous example, I ended up with 0 equal to 0, and they are equal. 0 is equal to 0. But... If I look at this one over here, 0 is not equal to negative 1. Which means that it doesn't matter what value of x I have, this is never going to be true because 0 is never going to be equal to negative 1. So this is what we so when we get something like this, we say therefore there is no solution. There is no answer, there is no value of x that is going to satisfy this equation and make it true. It's impossible. It's never going to happen because all the x's cancel out and I end up with 0 equal to negative 1 and 0 can never be equal to negative 1. Okay, so this is what we get when we have a no solution. It's where you, you try and solve it and you end up with one number equal to a different number and there are no x's. Then you can't solve it, so there is no solution. If you have, like in the previous example, also, all the x's cancelling out, but you equal to you end up with one number equal to the same number. Then x is an element of all real numbers. It can be anything, and it will be true. But if you end up with a number equal to a different number, which is impossible, then you know that there is no solution. No value of x will work. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to do for yourself. Okay, so for this exercise, I'm going to give you three minutes to solve all of these equations.
Okay, so let's see how those examples went. So in the first equation, we had 3x plus 2 equal to 3x plus 2. So again, if I want to take all my x's and have only x's on the left-hand side, I'm going to have 3x. Then I'm going to leave out that 2. I'm going to take that positive 3x, and I'm going to subtract 3x on both sides. So that's going to be minus 3x equals. And on the right-hand side, I've got 2. And we subtract the 2, giving me minus 2. So this gives me 0 equal to 0. So because I end up with 0 equal to 0, this one number equal to the same number, I can say, therefore, x is an element of all real numbers. Okay, so that is what you get for that example over there. Question B, we've got 2x minus 4 equal to 2x minus 5. So same thing as we did in the previous one, we're going to take the 2x, I'm going to take this 2x over here and subtract it on both sides, equals... On this side, I have minus 5. I'm going to take this minus 4 and add it on both sides, plus 4. And that gives me 2x minus 2x is 0, equal to negative 5 plus 4, which is negative 1. But I know that 0 is not equal to negative 1. It's impossible. It can't happen. So therefore, there is no solution. So that's what you should have got for question B, that there is no solution. Question C, we've got x plus 6 minus 3x equals 2x minus 3 minus 4x. I'm going to take my x's to the left-hand side. I'm going to have x minus 3x. Then I'm going to subtract the 2x, and I'm going to add 4x equals. Over here, I've got minus 3. Then I'm going to minus 6. So x minus 3x minus 2x plus 4x. This all is going to give me 0 equals negative 3 minus 6 is negative 9. But now I know that 0 is not equal to negative 9, so therefore there is no solution. Okay, and then the last one, question D, we had 5 plus 5x minus 2 equal to 3x minus 5 plus 2x plus 8. Same thing, I'm going to follow the same process, I'm going to have 5x then I'm going to go over here, I've got 3x, I'm going to subtract 3x on both sides. Over here I've got 2x, I'm going to subtract 2x on both sides, equals. Then I've got minus 5 plus 8, and then I'm going to subtract 5 on both sides, and I'm going to, sub I'm going to add 2 on both sides. Okay, so now 5x minus 3x minus 2x is 0, equals. Minus 5 plus 8 minus 5 plus 2 is 0. So now I can say, but 0 is equal to 0, so it doesn't matter what x is, 0 will always be equal to 0. So therefore, x is an element of all real numbers. And that's what you should have got for those examples. And that is how we solve equations. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.